Hey there folks, it's Matthew Seville here and I'm in the High Sierras photographing this beautiful sunrise behind me and I wanted to take the time to talk about something that I've been doing for a very long time but most of the photographers seem very scared to do and that is on Nikon cameras raw capture has three different options or four different options and it makes a huge difference in the file size that your uh, your 24 or 36 megapixel images take up on your memory cards. So basically, on Nikon you have, for raw compression, you have uncompressed, lossless compressed, and compressed. And the difference is, lossless compressed is supposed to be like a zip file where it doesn't harm the file. And then of course, obviously, compressed is lossy compression, which means it's sort of applying a JPEG compression algorithm to the image but the question is, can you tell the difference? The other option is 14-bit uh, and 12-bit RAW mode. And again, it's just a matter of how much data you want to capture. Is 14-bit the absolute requirement for everything? Or does 12-bit work very awesomely, which is my hypothesis, in most conditions? So we're here with a very extremely dynamic scene you can see behind me. I've got the bright, bright sun. It's a very warm color. And then over on the side, I've got a very deep, dark, dark, bluish, cool shade. So I've got a lot of dynamic range going on here. And I'm going to test this out. I'm gonna shoot all the different options, and then I'll show you. We'll probably be post-processing these things very strongly, which is what I think will be the only way to actually bring out the difference in those raw compression options. So the first moral of the story is, if you shoot in very easy lighting conditions, and if you shoot high volume like weddings or portraits, you probably will want to set your camera, your Nikon camera, to 12-bit lossy compressed, and you can just stop watching this video right now. But if you're a very uh, meticulous landscape photographer, and you really care a lot about uh, detail and dynamic range and uh, all of that stuff, then stay tuned and keep watching and we'll figure this all out. Well, despite the storm that came through and hit us with thunder and lightning and rain and even a little bit of snow, I did manage to get those test sample images, the raw NEF Nikon files from my D800E. And here we have this set here is the green set of images is properly exposed. And then what I'm going to do is try a terribly underexposed scene. Here is red and a terribly overexposed scene in yellow. And if I go to the NEF file, you can see I renamed them uh, uncompressed 14-bit NEF. Here's a JPEG version of that. And then this is lossless 14-bit. And then this is compressed 14-bit. And then this is uncompressed 12-bit all on down the line until you get to compressed 12-bit. So as you can see, if I want to delete the adjustments here so you can see just how dynamic of a scene it actually was, if I hit reset here, you can see there is in fact, even though I tried to properly expose this, there are a little bit of black shadows in this one. And if I go over here and hit reset on this one, I don't even wanna know, oh boy, see, this is gonna be real bad. And then the uh, reset on this bright one here is going to have some pretty well-cooked highlights. And now the reason that I did this is because I suspect it's going to be difficult to show a difference in the raw compression or file type options unless you are really, really going crazy with your camera adjustments, with your editing. And that has been my hypothesis. I did a few tests 
years, years ago, but not nothing too scientific. You know, I was just starting to get into photography at the time. So my hypothesis these, these whole years has been that unless you're going absolutely crazy with your editing, you don't need to do the super duper highest quality NEF RAW files. And so let us see if that is correct. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo these resetting settings here. And as you can see, this one has plus two exposure compensation dialed in. The other ones, the overexposed ones, had negative two exposure compensation dialed in. And let's keep going back here. Let's go to the regular proper exposed one. As you can see, in addition to the extreme underexposure and overexposure, I'm pushing my shadows to a plus 100. I'm pushing my highlights and whites way down. I'm pushing my blacks to plus 90. I'm pushing my contrast way up. Again, I need to do this in order to see any difference whatsoever in these raw files. And in fact, if I were to, uh, let's actually filter the uh, JPEG photos here. And I'm going to hit E to go back to my loop just so that I can zoom in and scroll quickly from photo to photo. Actually, you know what? We might need to zoom in even more if we're going photo to photo with these things. Right now, I am zoomed in to one to one. And even in these deepest, darkest shadows, I can't really see that much of a difference overall from photo to photo. There might be a, a well, first of all, there's a little bit of noise type stuff going on here. Just the, the, uh, the general bits and pieces of noise that vary from photo to photo. However, you can very faintly see, this is all I'm seeing, is a very faint tint change in some of the photos. And so let's see what happens if I hit Command Plus to zoom in even further. And now I'm at two to one. I'm zooming in at 200% on an exported and re-imported JPEG file. And remember, this was a clipped black in the original NEF file on a Nikon D800E, which has quite a bit of, quite a fair amount of dynamic range. Yeah, it's, uh, it's showing me a little bit of a difference here and there. Oh, I'm gonna have to, sorry about the problems uh, scrolling from photo to photo. Let's try zooming in here and see, see if we can see anything all the way. Let's just go straight from, let me select these two and just go from photo to photo straight from the very best here, the uncompressed 14-bit all the way to the compressed 12-bit. Aside from a slight green magenta tint in the shadows, I don't see any difference in the fine detail or the overall tonality. There's no horrible posterization at these edges like you might expect from some raw files. There's a, it actually looks like there's a faint, faint bit more detail in one of these images. There's a little bit better contrast overall in this scene. So, okay, let's check the shadows. I mean, the highlights of this properly exposed shot. Again, I'm zooming in to 200% on an exported and re-imported JPEG file in Lightroom. What I want to know is, am I getting any sort of edges, posterization along these noticeable edges from this file to this file. Again, here's the 12-bit compressed file, and here's the 14-bit uncompressed file. I see a little faint bit of artifacting around these hard edges in both images, but by and large, there isn't much difference from photo to photo, which basically does prove my point. If you are properly exposing your images or if you have a camera with lots of dynamic range, you are pretty much not needing all of that extra image data. Now, of course, before we go any further, I do need to say if you, you know, the whole do you, do you need it, do you not need it type of argument, what most people say is, well, memory cards are cheap, hard drives are cheap, why not just shoot in the highest quality possible setting? And you know what? That's totally valid as an argument. You might as well shoot the highest quality if you don't shoot that much high volume. However, again, as I said earlier, I'm often in time-lapse environments where I need to shoot a thousand or, or, or hundreds and hundreds of photos in a short period many times a day, or I'm in a, a wedding environment where I'm shooting three or four or five thousand photos in a single day, as a, as a team collectively at least. 
And there's also sports, action sports to consider, from wildlife to air shows. If you're going to blaze through a, a 8 frames per second camera, shooting in 12-bit compressed RAW could really help your buffer be extremely generous as opposed to filling up really quickly. So yes, in my experience, there are plenty of practical uses for this type of serious photography. But okay, let's just wrap this up by glancing at the extremely underexposed and overexposed images really quick. I want to just look at the 14-bit uncompressed files and the 12-bit compressed files because I don't think there will be much of a difference between any of them. So let's zoom in here again to the shadows. Remember, this was two stops underexposed and it had extreme post-production applied as well. From going from here to the next image, we do see a very significant green tint going on because this was horribly, horribly underexposed. But honestly, if I had wanted to cheat and cover this up, I probably could have very easily just gone into the shadow tint dial slider on Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw and fixed this simple problem very easily. Just this magenta and this greenish tint that's relatively easy to correct. I'm still not seeing terrible amounts of posturization along the edges of these shadows. What I want to check in this over terribly overexposed image is the highlights and see what the highlight recovery was able to do or unable to do. So let's look at this image here. This is the 14-bit uncompressed. And let's look at the 12-bit compressed. Going from this photo to this photo, there's really not much difference at all in the highlight preservation. Again, no posturization, no real loss of image detail. Both images look about as good as they're gonna look when you blow out your highlights that badly. Compared to, again, this was the underexposed one here, you can see how well the highlights were preserved. Anyways, folks, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in. I know, like I said, this is a pretty controversial decision for a photographer to make but I would highly recommend considering it if you shoot very high volume type things such as time lapse or wildlife or action sports or long, long, long event coverage. And personally, as a landscape photographer who does serious landscape work right alongside you know, high volume time lapse work, I set up my Nikon cameras to have two user menu or custom menu or whatever options, depending on which Nikon you have, so that I can switch back and forth between 14-bit lossless compressed and 12-bit compressed NEF files. That way I can go on a really, really long trip, a road trip or a backpacking trip and not have to bring a laptop and download photos every two days or whatnot. For me, it's just the best of both worlds. Okay, thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.